Tan Kekashele, Egan Chakta Donako Larry. Minister, RSE or religious and sexual education is uh, it's vitally important. And it's vitally important that we get it right. Because if we don't get it right, then we risk uh, our children growing into adults who have, uh, I suppose, a, a feeling potentially of being othered, um, uh, a disfigured um, or unhealthy uh, understanding of sexuality, uh, and, uh, and a feeling of exclusion uh, and discomfort within their educational setting. So it's vitally important that we get it right. There is a significant amount of concern, Minister, and you will know this, at some of the programmes that are being run out Thank uh, you, in our schools at this moment in time. Uh, um, access to uh, sexual and health education is an important right for students. Social Personal and Health Education, or SPHE, is a mandatory curriculum subject in all primary schools and post-primary schools. Um, relationship and sexual education is required at all levels, as I've said, from primary uh, straight through to senior cycle, and the department has set out the context for each of these programmes in SPHE syllabuses and guidelines. All schools are required to have an, uh, an RSE policy that is developed in consultation and collaboration and engagement with the school community, and that includes school management, parents, teachers, and, and students as appropriate. The school's program for RSE is developed and taught in the context of the school's RSE policy. Schools are required to teach all aspects of the RSE program, including family planning, sexually transmitted infections, and sexual orientation. It is important to note that the ethos of the school should never preclude learners from acquiring the knowledge about the issues, but ethos may influence how that content is treated. The programme for government states that this government will develop inclusive and age-appropriate curricula for relationships and sexual education and social, personal and health education across primary and post-primary schools, including an inclusive programme on LGBTI+, uh, and make appropriate legislative changes if necessary. The Department of Education is working closely with the NCA, which continues the process of curricular development and publishing additional resources for SPHE and RSE to determine the approach to best give effect to this commitment in the programme for government. And this does include legislative change if necessary. The report um, on the review of relationship and sexuality education RSE programme in primary and post-primary um, in post-primary schools was published by the NCCA in December 2019 as part of the review uh, of the RSE. An extensive consultation occurred and feedback was facilitated through an online survey, written submissions, roundtable meetings and large events. Adjustments were made to the final report to reflect a stronger focus on issues that stakeholders wish to see highlighted. Um, the NCCA is developing updated guidance materials for schools now and equally so the NCCA have developed two development groups who are currently working on specifications with a particular focus on the updating of the syllabus at junior cycle level. Chuck A number of questions arise. Um, Minister, first I suppose time skills, time skills on when we're going to see some of that work come back because uh, we cannot have it going into the never never. The second is more of a question of principles and Minister do you accept that in a school environment where, and they are at liberty to teach, uh, in this way, where there isn't an objective sexual education uh, curriculum, where um, a child is taught that it is the view of, uh, of the ethos of their school that uh, a relationship should be between a man and a woman, and that there is an LGBT child in that school. Do you accept that they would feel uncomfortable? Do you accept that they would feel othered? Do you accept that that is also entirely permitted within uh, the legislative framework that exists at this point in time, Minister. Uh, um, in, in the first instance, can I say that the primary objective within school is to ensure that all children, uh, irrespective of their background, their beliefs, their uh, orientation, that they are all welcomed, that they are all included. Um, uh, and, and that is, um, you know, that is the experience, and that is uh, what we wish the experience of education to be for all concerned. Um, as I alluded to earlier, and you specifically asked in relation to timelines, the, the NCCA is developing the updated guidelines, as, as I have referred to, 
and there is information and um, um, toolkit available online for, for schools in the interim, but specifically in relation to the body of work that has been done by the development groups. Uh, and this is specifically at um, uh, you know, providing new specifications in terms of um, syllabus for, uh, in the first instance, junior cycle and thereafter moving onwards. Um, the, the, the work of, of, of that is... Um, being undertaken uh, presently and the review of the, the junior cycle has been drafted and will be considered by the NCCA uh, by summer and subsequent work uh, on the development of the new junior cycle curriculum programme will begin uh, in the new school year. The, the Minister has, uh, has partially answered part of my question, uh, but the other question she has not. Minister, there, is, there are many parents who are quite alarmed at the content of some of the religious based RSE programs being introduced in their children's school. And like you know, we can talk about parental choice, but in the reality, particularly at primary level, many parents don't really have a choice. The vast, vast majority, nine out of every ten national schools in particular, uh, are of a Catholic ethos. So that element of choice we need to advance very significantly. But it also affects the fact that um, many children are are taught an RSE programme that is not necessarily in keeping with their beliefs or the beliefs of their families. And this really just eats us impacting what children are learning about relationships, about sexual orientation and very other things. And it allows schools to pick and choose uh, to some extent the curriculum. So Minister, I will ask you again, do you accept the fact that a child who's from LGBT could be taught in a school that a relationship should be between a man and a woman, and that they would feel uncomfortable, and that that is allowed within our legislation at this point in time. Uh, thank you, Deputy. Uh, and again, I, I will outline that, you know, as I have stated clearly, um, all schools are required to have an RSE policy. Um, and that RSE policy, I, I think we must acknowledge, is developed uh, in consultation with the entire school community. And the entire school community includes school management, parents, teachers, students, as appropriate. And the school's programme for RSE is developed and taught in the context, as you have said, of, uh, of the school's RSE policy. So it's, it's a shared policy. It's a policy that has been uh, achieved uh, through collaboration and engagement with all of the, the, the partners with, with, say, within the school forum. Equally so, it's important to say that the ethos of the school should never preclude learners from acquiring knowledge about the issues and indeed following the curriculum as outlined by the NCCA. And that's important. There is an NCCA curriculum. But equally so, I will say, Deputy, um, many individuals from a variety of different experiences and backgrounds would say that there is a need for a, a, a new uh, curriculum to be put in place in terms of uh, RSE, SPHE, and that's currently the work that is ongoing, and as I say, the, um, that, that work will continue um, right into uh, next year. Uh, thank you, Minister.